I hear you both. Well, I yes, hear you. Hear but that's not a spook. The whole thing got shut all the way down. I was kicked I completely out. So the was kicked as off. As, huh? As, as soon as I tried to join the chat, all of a sudden, I noticed that as soon as I hit the join button, I saw the chat and then everything shut down. Yeah. Terry, did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did it. It's that Dennis. Shut everything down. Dennis the menace. Softly funny. Den I've been Dennis the menace. Mr. Wilson. I've been seeing that happen lots lately, especially um, in chats in the evening where they're um, unmuting someone's mic and as soon as they key their mic, they get kicked out of chat. That's what happened to me almost everywhere now. It's interesting because I'm thinking, how much room does Telegram have to store all these videos and movies and people and pictures? It's just like, wow. <laughs> It's a lot. Yeah. Well, there was an astrology. There's an astrology that I wanted us to watch. But then also, I was just uh, talking about how yesterday some things happened. And I'll say that it was mild grade drama because I found myself being entertained and participating, but not, not at the level where I could take any of it seriously. But what I will say is that maybe you start starting to notice that like maybe when you want to be angry, you can't really be angry. You might want to be jealous, but you can't be jealous. But um, I did want to just say this, that it is definitely a time where you have to decide what you want. And I was talking to this young lady and she was so conflicted about what she want. Like, I want to. I want to break up and I want to do this. And, I, and then honestly, I, I know she just didn't. And it went to the point of as soon as she got off the phone and she went to say, you know, but I love this person and I want to be with them forever. <laughs> and I was just like, you kind of got to just make up your mind, like what it is that you want to do. But in these things, um, I just wanted to talk about like just a little bit about relationships because there's some things that we do to people that you can't really come back from. And there's some things you can say to people that you can apologize all you want. You can't erase it. And if you really, because because the thing, this is going to be a part of what comes across today is that you really have to decide what you want. And if you really want someone or something, you can't put negative thoughts behind it, but you definitely can't speak negativity into it. And if you really want to be with someone, you have to value them and treat them in a way that lets them know that they're actually valued. And I think a lot of people, they've learned, like we've learned over time, like that rule if you get the number, don't call within three days. You know, like all those little stupid rules that people play. Like all this is out, just stop playing games with people. Stop trying to, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make the person jealous. And then they'll see there's just things that people in relationships can't come back from. Like once you start cursing at each other, there's no lid on that. You can try to undo it. But the next time it's like, you know, letting out with anger or actual physical fighting. And I think, um, it's interesting too because you think, oh, these spiritual people ain't doing all that, but they are. <laughs> the, things that, the things that alter the love quotient in your relationship. If you're not careful and you alter that love quotient too far, like you said, you'll never come back from it, no matter how hard you try. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you want to count over the mistakes, it, it's hard to, and yeah, you know, people can do releases and stuff like that, but we're getting to this point where you have to honestly make decisions. And then too, in this, in this and other, I was giving the person examples 
once you go through all these dramas, it intensifies the relationship. And then, and then maybe be careful. What are you trying to intensify and promote if you're not even really sure if you want to be with a person or not? I think a lot of times now people think in terms of they, they want to have relationships, but they're not really being honest about the levels at which they are. Like some people just aren't really good at monogamy. Some people aren't good at long-term stuff. Some people are just fickle and they really, they want a relationship, but they actually value being alone more. And they're pursuing relationships and connecting to people, not necessarily being honest with who they are. And sometimes you really, you want somebody, but you really aren't looking for, like we talked about, like sometimes you want a twin flame Sometimes you want a fling. Sometimes you want that ultimate life mate. But uh, people don't give themselves room to be who they are. And instead, you might just be wanting some fuckery right now. You might really just want to play and, you know, whatever. But you have this um, this old fashioned paradigm, this old fashioned way of thinking where you think you got to be married or you got to be, you know, in in inside some type of major relationship you know what i'm saying this relationship box when maybe that's not what you're ready for it but i think you have to be honest with yourself because whatever level you're at you can meet people at that level and you don't have to force yourself into relationships with people to get what you want because you're afraid to admit where you are right now i'm telling a lot of people this too lately that Maybe you really don't want a relationship right now. Not that you don't want friendships and companionships, but you might not want committed relationships right now. And um, the only reason you really feel bad about that is because we have this thought of, you know, we're raised in this culture where, you know, you Christian, get married, have two kids. And and that's really manufactured. I'm, I'm not really sure you know, how we're supposed to pursue relationships. I don't know if there was a society where it it definitely wasn't a society where everybody got married. I just know that. And I find that I see people trying to commit to things that they really can't um, hold up. And so figure that out before you make big statements. And also too, while people are having sex, they're ha- making contracts. Cause you're saying, tell me you love me forever. Tell me you'll be with me <laughs> forever and stuff like that. And it's like, whoa, whoa. Or I'll love you for the, a, a lifetime. And I want to, you know, like be careful with your words because you're like actually writing checks. You're signing contracts. You're making promises to people and you're asking people to make these promises. And then when the relationship's over, you're wondering why you can't move on, why you can't fit into a new space and why this person won't stop calling me, why this person won't leave me alone. Look at the uh, effect, and um, we all experienced it, of the first time and how much you fall in love with that first time. So far, so deep, so wide. Yeah. And then you you just tangent off, maybe. But look at the couples that, you know, we've heard of and seen of through our lives and throughout time that they got together. And from the day they got together, they stayed together. And they've gone through hell and thick and thin, but they're incredibly happy with each other because they never broke that bond of that first time. There's there's so much to be said for all that we go through and experience and how the system sets up to undermine that through skullduggery and programming and signs and everything else. It's an amazing it's an amazing now entanglement. I just wanted to okay I, I just wanted to say the other thing that every time that we have a relationship with someone, we become entangled with their energy 
And so even though you may have cut it off with them, our, our energies are still entangled. That's just in the quantum field. So meanwhile, you think you've left somebody from 10 years ago, but you're still carrying an aspect of their energy with you. You're still, you're still connected energetically to them. And so it becomes really uh, an important thing of being able to call back your energy from these relationships that you have had in the past, even though, you know, you parted, but did you bring your energy back to you? You know, did you un unentangle with that person? And it becomes really um, something that we have to, to think about is, um, we're carrying that person with us. And so all of these little energies and little <laughs> affairs that people have, they're energetically entwined with people. So I, I think it's important. And, and so, yeah, people who have been together for a long time and they've been just with each other, they're not carrying all of the excess load of all these other, other um, relationships. So I just wanted to add that from an energetic standpoint. Lee and I did advise this person to um, undo some hooks. But you know what? I was thinking about how we discussed the other day saving pyromaniacs from fires because they just like fire and they're in fires every week. So if you keep trying to put out their fires, it just, you know, I... I just know that we're just, <laughs> we're having a watch where we spend our time and our energy. And there's some people, no, I won't say some people. I'm, we're at a time where you, if you got karma, you're, you're going to deal with it. Unless you can come out and say, you know what, I, I want to learn these lessons with love and gentleness, and I don't want to keep repeating these lessons. And you can, you know, get in, connected with source and ask source to move you above the vibration of your problems, but most people don't know it, they don't do it. And sometimes people like to linger and wallow in it. And I used to like to lament, and that's what I call it, like um, when you're sad or miserable or in a bad place, it's not that you really want to get out. You kind of linger in it and wallow in it because that's the state of mind that you enjoy. That's the one that you're used to. So it definitely takes some observation to get to the point where you're actually deciding now, I don't want to be miserable anymore. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be volatile. I don't want to be dramatic. I actually want to be peaceful and happy and joyous. And I actually want to live my life um, the way that I, that I desire. I want this new existence. So definitely now is the time to master your energy and make solid decisions, firm decisions on what exactly it is that you want to participate in. And then for people, this was another thing um, that, that I was thinking about is that you can look at other people's relationships and, be, and say, I would never do that. And I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't, that couldn't be me. And you'll go try to fix what somebody else is going through. Like if they come to you, even if someone comes to you for advice, you honestly really can't apply your logic and your desires to what their, their situation. Cause you might think, well, you deserve better and you should change and you should fix this. And, and guess what? It really doesn't matter because that, where that person is and what they're dealing with, that's theirs. And your perfect situation is not their perfect situations. I've, I've read people's, um, their birth cards. And I've just seen the, the way that they deal with life is just completely different from the way that you deal with it. And, and I've never believed in too, when people are coming to you, telling you their problems that you should tell them to break up or quit their job or do certain things because you are not, you don't want to be responsible for their decisions, but they have to reach that point where they deal with it and figure out the lessons that they need to learn so that they can get themselves out of it. I think it's kind of a, 
tough thing, especially if you do tarot or oracle readings or, you know, like any type of healing work, because your job isn't really to go in and dissect and cut everything out and, and do it for the person. It's to open the doors and shine the light to show them where their what their options are. And if they desire to improve it for them to make the decisions and do the work to do that. So that's basically the thought that I had for today. Um, and then I'm guessing, I don't know if you want me to do the video, Terry. I was trying to do it, but it wasn't working. I don't know why my, my laptop is acting crazy. Go for oh. it. Okay. In case anybody didn't know, we were recording just now. So, but I know Dennis isn't shy. So, Ooh, forgive me, y'all. I'm trying to. Dang, these buttons aren't. <laughs> these buttons are acting up on me, Terry. This is hilarious. I tried what? last night seven different ways from Sunday and had everybody participating to try and help me be able to stream David Icke's drop from yesterday morning. This no is freaky. what I did, it would not play. And then Vanessa comes in and boom, boom, boom. Just, here you go. It's like, oh man, what the heck? I've been reading the numerology about the letters in my name, CBK, or now W instead of K. And it's blowing my mind. Like, just, my mind's on fire right now. Are, are you reading the uh, numerology or Gematria? It's the numerology book. It is good. What about DMG? I have no idea what you are talking about, what that is. I don't know. I am Yes, Mark Gibbs. Mark Gibbs. What I do know is that this is explaining um, how Hebrew was written right to left because they take from self towards God. So the reflection goes right to left. That's why they wrote that way. It's supposed to be um, a hidden mystery. If it was so simple for the plain eye to see, everybody would know it. But when you understand why it goes in reverse, it's because the reflection of God goes from right to left. Oh, Terry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I mean, this screen is just stuttering and puttering. I mean, it's really weird. Well, I'm vibrating really high, so if I'm contributing, I apologize. Oh, my goodness. This thing. The buttons have disappeared. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're not going to watch that video, Erica. <laughs> No, we're not. Clear, I think we should just... Clearly a message not, that we don't need to watch that today. <laughs> you want me yeah. to you? No, I just think that, that this is really weird because I just watched it this morning, too. And Anyway. Instead of it, it's just making my screen move. Like, instead, you're just getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. So I guess you're just going to do the collective reading. Oh, okay, okay, now all so, of a sudden. What's that? <laughs> all of a sudden, now the buttons are working. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. We're looking. Oh, Bracca. Love it. I, I know, right? Believers. Believers. And a and very, a very warm, warm welcome, welcome to your, to your birthday, birthday horoscope, horoscope forecast for October. October. 
Now, it's been talking now, I've been about talking about this month, month for quite some, quite some time, time because, yes, because yes, it is the month, is the month of, of eclipses. eclipses. We've got a We've solar, got a solar eclipse, eclipse in your sign in, your in, the, middle in the middle of the month, of the month and, a and a lunar eclipse, eclipse in Taurus, in Taurus also, also a sign ruled by Venus. By Venus. So your, so your lovely Venus energy is strong, strong all, month. all month. And don't, and don't forget, forget that eclipses last, last for about, for about six, months. six months. So this frequency, so frequency is ongoing. ongoing. It will be very, very, very helpful if you, if you can find a placement, placement of your, of your own Venus, Venus in your, in your chart. chart. If you know, if you it, know it, great. But, but if you don't, you get a free chart from my website, yourastrologyscience.com. If you go to reports and click on free report, you get a free mini reading and you'll also find out where your Venus is. It's really good to look at Venus in your chart because Venus shows what gives you pleasure, what you enjoy, often where your creativity lies. It often shows you where your talents and gifts are. So it's a really important planet in the chart and it's going to be activated, highly activated by the eclipses. So that will tune you in personally with the frequencies as well as the general energies that I'm going to show in this video. So on the 5th of October, we've got Mercury coming into your sign, joining the Sun and Mars. This is a time for making decisions, Libras. Yes, I know. Ah, shall I, shan't I, will I, won't I? Mars in your sign, it gives you the energy, the confidence to say, yes, I'm moving forward. This is what I want. This is what is important to me. And I'm going to shine my light no matter what. And I'm going to keep going. So it's very much an energy of determination. Speaking, Mercury in your sign, speaking what is your truth and what is important to you. Communicating, of course, with diplomacy, because that's just how you are. Venus, your ruler, will go into Virgo on the 9th of the month and into your 12th house. So this is going to take you on the journey of inner exploration. It's wonderful for enjoying solitude, silence, nature, animals, general peacefulness. It's a wonderful time for going into astrology, anything metaphysic, physical, anything esoteric, into those invisible realms that are so mystical and so powerful. On the 13th of the month, Mars will come into your second house. Mars giving you a burst of energy with your finances, moving forward maybe with a project, with a work, with, a, with an opportunity, something you've been thinking about for a while. Off you go. Mars just says, come on, let's go, lovely Libras. It's also energizing your gifts, your talents. Maybe you've been thinking about developing something that you really enjoy, but you haven't done it yet. Mars just says, time to go, time to take action. And on the 14th of the month, we have this solar eclipse in your sign, lovely Libras. So this is an important time. It's in a new beginning, a rebirth for you. Whenever something happens in this first house, this is you being born again, yes? So what is it that you want to birth? It might be an actual child, it might be a business, it might be a relationship, it might be a new you altogether. What do you want to give birth to? What are the new seeds that you want to plant? These are all the good questions to ask yourself so that you can really use the powerful impetus of this eclipse in your sign. Remember that eclipses bring changes. It's, it's a moon on steroids and the moon is constantly changing. Every two and a half days, it changes sign. Everything changes. I thought I had a very peaceful environment to do the videos today. And as you can hear, somebody with a loud speaker is coming by. So it's about learning to be flexible, to go with a certain flow of events where you just haven't got control. You learn, okay, I'll let go and I'll enjoy the experience. So it's just a, a matter of knowing when to release and so surrender and when to dig your heels in and keep going and that's this balance of energy that you're working with with the solar eclipse in your sign on the 23rd of the month the sun and mercury will come into this second house giving you a nice boost of financial possibilities financial uh, promotions opportunities negotiations uh, it's, a, it's a real opportunity for some good energy to come into this life area it's also an important time to remember even more to be grateful for what you do have, to look at your cup as being half full, three quarters, or maybe even full, and coming from that energetic frequency, and you'll find that you'll draw to you more abundance than you could ever possibly imagine. Now, on the 28th of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse happening here in your eighth house. It's resonating here with Jupiter and Uranus. And lunar eclipses are often times of completion. So you might be completing a project, you might be completing some kind of contract, financial agreement, 
partnership. Something may come to light, especially on the deep emotional level, that you maybe it's time to release the old past that you might have been holding on to that you don't need to hold on to anymore, that you're free and able to create this new energy in your life to elevate your consciousness to this higher level so that you can experience more of your innate joyful being, which is what you are. So I wish you a wonderful birthday ahead, lovely fellow Librans. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing and subbing. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad it was give stuff for my birthday. So I'm a really I'm really I'm glad. About <laughs> yeah. It falls in line. So hey, I so I took I picked two cards from um um the universal love as we were listening to oh is this happening? Um as we were listening to her and <laughs> I, 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 you can't make it up. So the first one was emergence and the second one was miracles. So, so, um, with the emergence card is we're going into, and, and this is what you talked about was, um, new beginnings, a, a whole new cycle. And so as, as we emerge, uh, you know, yes, we can say it was, you know, this was for the Libras, but I think it's for everybody. We're emerging into a new energy and um, we have to, um, you know, be prepared for, we have to prepare ourselves in the sense of we don't know what's coming. And that, so there's miracles that are on the way. How do we... Um, how do we move forward into these into these energies and you know we can't necessarily um move forward from the past so we have to find that space within us now maybe take some time to be mindful and just say what is it that i want to create in my future and you know not based on the past but based on moving forward if I'm the, at the beginning of a new cycle. I'm at the beginning of my life. We're at that every day. What do I want to create and what do I expect to create in the future? And I think allowing yourself to connect with your higher self, then you can emerge uh, as this being that is create is, is um, centered um from their higher self and that aspect of our higher self knows how to proceed and so it's a matter of allowing that being to just emerge through us allowing yourself to emerge from that quantum field and just realize that these restrictions are only are only put there for us by um us allowing them there so in other words if somebody says you can't do it then you say oh i guess i can't do it so we then limit ourselves we have to allow that higher part of ourselves to emerge so that we are become limitless and miracles will happen that's my perspective on this I like it too, because um, I guess if you go back, I'll leave the link for you to go back and um, like just to watch that part. But um, and she's basically saying, find find this particular house where it lands in your where things land in your chart to find the Libra or uh, Libra Mars and uh, certain things, so that you know mm -hmm. um, what uh, area of beautification to work with. You know, what area, like, was it be in the eighth house, the seventh house, or whatever? So to, to map that out and figure it out for yourself. Then I was also thinking for new things to begin, for you to walk through a door, you got to be willing to let go of some stuff. You got to be willing, like, even going back to that relationship thing, like, you might want this new pristine relationship, but you can't make it out of an old beat down thing. I don't know if um, people know about, though, the, there's the 
the wine cloth. I guess it was like a sack, sack or something that they would put the wine in. Or you, you might want to, you could even say with fixing your car, when you, you ever notice when you put a new part on your car, the things around it begin to break because now you got something new and strong. It actually pulls and wears other things out faster. So if you want something new, you're going to have to really be willing to let go of all the old stuff to let to make room for those new things in your life, whether it be relationship or finances, because maybe you want new finances, but maybe you need to let go of an old job. But I also knew too that when I had certain people in my life, I couldn't be prosperous because they were always going to be the ones pulling me back down. So it wasn't never it was never fit for me to move forward because I was still had this old baggage, this, these clunkers in my life. And I had to like really change the way I do things. And if you want these new happy emotions like love, then you can't be walking around still bitter about everything that's ever happened to you in your life. You have to be able to let go of the old to be able to take on the new. And I think that's pretty much the message for the day with that. And we'll go ahead and um, turn off the recording and do the private individual readings. Mm -hmm.